Welcome back. So now we're going to look at how we can get the grid to generate edges uh, and do the hard work for us. Uh, so let's, uh, so these are all the tiles from the previous video. I'll just get those deleted and then let's add just a regular cube. So first let's add a cube uh, to the grid like this and I'll resize it a bit. Now this cube, uh, if we press play, doesn't do anything. You can see you can pass right through it because the grid has no way of knowing that it exists. So we need to tell the grid to look for things like this cube. That is simple enough to do. Uh, if we select the grid manager and we scroll down to the config options here, we will find uh, this uh, boolean here which you can check for trace for walls so if we check this we will see that we can now no longer move through this cube even though it's just a regular mesh with no special code attached to it we can see that you can also create you know thin walls or whatever shapes you want using this method let's create a thin wall like this and you will have the same sort of thing that you can now move around it and it blocks walkability. So how does this work? Well it works by the grid manager at startup using a line trace tracing in every direction to the uh, surrounding tiles and if th that line trace is blocked then um, that edge will be removed. Uh, we can see this if we go into the grid manager we edit the blueprint here. Now here is the activate grid manager event which is called from the game state at the beginning of the game. Uh, lots of stuff happens here which is covered in other videos. Um, but setup, uh, no I mean uh, setup grid arrays is what we are interested in. Uh, and here we have the generate grid edges event. Um, here you have the one that adds the edges of the tiles, uh, tile actor placed in the um, viewport to the grid by the way but this is the one that we are interested in now set edges based on terrain we have three different calls here based on uh, if we have a multi-level or one level grid or if we don't have any height differences at all more, more about these two at um, a later point but first uh, height map is set to false on our grid uh, so we add tile edges no height map and here is the trace. So we can uh, draw a debug persistent line trace for this so that I can uh, visualize for you guys how this works. So if we now hit play you will see that line traces go in every direction from each of these tiles. Um, and these places here you can see that these traces are blocked. So you can see that the trace from this tile, the center of this tile to the center of this tile is blocked by this mesh and thus this edge between these two and the edge going the other way uh, are both removed. We can see that if we resize this mesh slightly we can now move past it because uh, these corner edges are no longer blocked by this line trace. Also note that we use a custom collision channel for this. So if we go to one of our meshes and we find its collision settings um, and we can change this to custom, uh, then you will find the wall trace channel here. And if we ignore this channel for this mesh, then we will see when starting the game that we can again move through and ignore uh, this mesh entirely. Um, so this means that anything that you place uh, in the area of the grid uh, that blocks the wall trace collision channel, if you have trace for walls enabled here, um, trace for walls enabled and the wall trace channel you can also set up here uh, if you want to use a different channel. But if this is enabled, uh, whatever uh, stuff you've placed on the grid which blocks this channel here will then uh, remove edges between the tiles uh, where it is placed.
You may notice that there are a couple of different trace channels defined within the grid manager. We have the path trace channel and the range trace channel. And now the path trace that is used to define what parts of the grid can be walked on. Uh, so uh, anything needs to block path trace if uh, units are uh, should be able to walk on top of it. While range trace that is used during gameplay to determine uh, visibility for these units so if they can target other units uh, with attacks uh, or if they are blocked by meshes etc. I can show this briefly uh, with the unit here. If we go back to this mesh we edited and in the collision settings we can see that it blocks range trace and path trace which means that uh, this mesh will be considered when generating walkability on the grid, which tiles can be walked on. Uh, since height maps are not enabled right now, um, all the tiles will be at height location zero, but more on that later. Uh, but for range trace, this means that this mesh should block visibility. Uh, now, if we go here, yeah, look, first let's go to the grid manager and turn off this debug trace so that doesn't bother us. Now if we select this unit and we increase his range uh, to something higher like 12 uh, and hit play we can see that uh, it doesn't block line of sight. Oh yeah it's too low. Uh, so the height at which you can see uh, tiles is defined within the abilities that you're using. Um, but yeah so we need to make this taller and if we now hit play we should be able to see that, yeah, we are blocking line of sight. And that is based on where we are standing. So lastly, let's talk briefly about the path trace channel. So that's the collision channel that uh, defines what parts um, or what inside this grid can be moved on top of. Uh, so by default, the grid manager, it um, blocks path trace for uh, the entire grid uh, and it doesn't uh, do this with each of these individual tiles having collision enabled but instead it has one large plane that covers the entire grid manager no matter how large the grid manager is and so we can show this collision plane here uh, but we can also then set this disable collision plane walkable uh, now this will work a bit strangely now that height maps is set to false but I will show this so we can see now that, well, yeah, let me turn off the collision plane visualization here. So that's a bit more clear to see. So we can see that we can still move to all of these places, but we're not able to click here. And that's because uh, of these abilities. Uh, they uh, try to see if the collision trace uh, channel or the path trace channel is blocked uh, beneath the mouse. So we can see that if we hover over these meshes, that then the ability is able uh, to find the tiles here. But since this collision plane no longer blocks path trace, uh, our mouse is no longer able to find the grid. Uh, but still all of these tiles are considered being part of the grid uh, and thus pathfinding can be done of them on them. Uh, this is when um, height map is been set to false. Uh, which means that it, the grid manager consider the entire, considers the entire grid uh, to be walkable by default and it doesn't bother doing traces to try, try to check if there are any tiles missing or something like that. Uh, so if you want uh, the grid manager to check if there are tiles missing we can set height map to one level and now if we click play we see that we can't move anywhere but we can then uh, add another cube here which by default blocks path trace and we can resize it and we can move this unit here so it's on top of it and now we can see that we're able to move on top of this mesh because it blocks path trace um, but yeah uh, this is a bit of what is in the procedural height map uh, features of this toolkit and that's what I will be talking about in the next video.